Hello everyone, in this lecture we will be going over you some of 2009 problem number one. Here's a view of this problem, including a sketch, a construction uh, underneath it. Um, so we, we are given two circles, omega 1 and omega 2. The smaller one on the left I called it omega 1 and the larger one on the right I called it as omega 2. And you can clearly see their centers O1 and O2. So those two circles are intersecting at points X and Y, also clearly seen on the picture. Let L1 be a line through the center omega 1, so this center O1, uh, intersecting omega 2 at two points P and Q here. So therefore, this is line L1. And in a similar way, let L2 be a line through the center of omega 2, namely O2 which uh, intersects the first circle at points R and S, so therefore that would be line L2. Now the, the, the main question, prove that if those four points, namely P, Q, R and S, lie on a circle, then it must be the case that the center of this circle, namely the circumcircle of quadrilateral P, Q, R, S, lies on the line Q, eh, sorry, X, Y. So uh, let's go ahead and draw that line, I guess. So the line X, Y here. So we would like to show that this, the, the, the uh, circumcircle of quadrilateral PQRS must lie on this line. So obviously on this line extended somewhere here, I guess. So we are told that PQRS are concyclic. So we have a circle like that. And obviously, huh, so that's our circle. It is obvious that the center of that circle will be somewhere here. Um, let's call it center O3, and that would be circle gamma 3, omega 3, I should say. Now, um, obviously, the, 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 the question is asking to show that, uh, show, let's write that down, show that um, O3 lies on the line x y okay so that's exactly what we want to show let's make a couple of observations so um i'm going to make use of the radical axis theorem obviously omega 1 and omega 2 intersect at points x and y therefore the segment x y is the radical axis of omega 1 omega 2 in a similar way um the radical axis of omega 1 and omega 3 would be rs line l2 and finally the um, radical axis of omega 2 and omega 3 would be pq or line l1 so therefore line l1 l2 and xy here are the three radical axes of these three uh, circles and by the radical axis theorem i know that these three lines will concur at the radical center so therefore this shows us that the intersection of l1 intersection l2 lies on the line segment x y so that's the first important result by radical axis theorem okay so that's awesome so now I know that these three lines L1 L2 and uh, X Y they all meet uh, at this unique point let's call this point as M so that's our first observation second of all um, we know that uh, the um, if I join the centers of O1 and O3 uh, so that would be perpendicular to the, um, this line segment will be perpendicular to the radical axis of uh, omega 1 and omega 3. The radical axis of omega 1 and omega 3 is Rs. In a similar way, when I join O2 and O3 here, like that, again, uh, the radical axis PQ would be perpendicular to the line segment joining the, the, the corresponding uh, centers of those circles. And as a result, when I focus on triangle, uh, focus on, let me write that down here. So focus on triangle O1, O2, O3 here. So on this triangle here, it looks like point N is the, uh, N is the ortho center, is the ortho center. 
Now, n is the ortho center. We know that xy is the radical axis of uh, circles omega 1 and omega 2. Therefore, xy is also perpendicular to the line segment O1, O2, which is the side of our triangle O1, O2, O3. Now, what's interesting is that... Um, so we, ha we know that N is the ortho center, and so we know that the perpendicular from O3 to the line segment O1, O2 will go through N, and it will be perpendicular to O1, O2, but that's this line segment here, so which we have perpendicular. So therefore, uh, it, this result establishes that uh, O3 is in fact uh, on the line X, Y here. So let me repeat my final argument. I already established N is the ortho center of our triangle because we have two altitudes here, one coming from O1 here and one coming from O2 here. So you can clearly see those two altitudes. And as a result, N is the ortho center. And therefore, the altitude from O3 to the line segment O1, O2 should go through N and should be perpendicular to this line segment O1, O2 but therefore it must be the same line as xy. So as a result, we just proved uh, this important uh, problem. And as you would think that, that that solves the problem and that's the end of it, then you start thinking, wait a second, we were able to solve this with, a, with an assumption. And the assumption we used is the fact that we made the assumption that O1, O2, O3 would form a degenerate uh, triangle. But what if O1, O2 and O3 end up being collinear? I can no longer uh, use this uh, line of argument as I did here in this, uh, in the first part of my proof. So as a result, I need to, um, this would be only uh, the first case. So I call this solution the case one. My solution is not complete yet. Uh, in my next video, I will show you what happens when O1, O2, O3 are collinear. So that's, you need to make sure you handle that case as well. Otherwise, this solution would only deserve partial credit during the actual USMO. So, hope to see you in our next video where we complete the second case of, um, of this result.